This is a production of Cornell University. Take it away, Donato. All right. Good morning, everybody. And uh, thank you, Larry, for having me. I appreciate you taking me on uh, two years ago, kid with a crazy idea. So today what, uh, well, first of all, my name is Donato Fraioli. And today what we're going to talk about uh, is my patent grow dome. Um, and before we get into it, it'll be a little easier to explain how we got here. If I first tell you what my family business does, there we go. All right, so um, what we do is we build air supported structures. My grandfather founded the company 60 years ago. Uh, I have had the great opportunity to learn under him and work with NFL teams, uh, MLS teams. I have done everything from a Bitcoin mining dome this winter uh, to a dome going out to New Zealand. So we cover quite a bit of ground. Our structures are used for many different things. Um, but my passion as a, a kid growing up was agriculture. So I tried to figure out a way to weld that into our family's business. Being a uh, kid, I had this vision of what can we do to feed the world, right? And what me and my lovely mother back there uh, in the back row came up with was what we call grow dome. Um, the concept was to feed the hungry people of the world, which was an ambitious goal. Um, but one I learned very quickly, you need to make money to do that. With that said, I didn't learn that lesson until we fully developed this design, which essentially is our standard air inflated product um, attached to a shipping container with an HVAC unit in it, uh, entrance and egress doors, so that this was a modular portable system that could be dropped down with no site construction except earth anchorage and inflated uh, in a matter of a couple of days so that uh, you could have an indoor grow space. So some of the basic specs on it um, and what I worked here with Larry on, actually ours is only 100 feet long, but uh, it's basically a, a 100 to an expandable four, five, 600 whatever you can imagine in terms of length, um, structure. It's made out of a, a vinyl coated polyester. Um, it actually has, which is really cool, uh, an a pretty good insulation value for uh, a greenhouse, which would be R4. We achieved that by having an outer skin and a dead airspace. Um, there's an emergency backup system that can come with it and our cable net system. So when you look at the position of where I want this to be between your conventional greenhouse like we have here or your standard hoop houses that kind of blow away, I kind of want to live in the middle grounds. And when the last speaker talked about scale and making hemp work at scale or anything work at scale, the beauty of these, as you grow them, the cost per square foot shrinks. Um, so, you know, my hope one day is I fly over the Midwest and I see a bunch of these deployed. The cool thing about dome construction, whether it's grow dome or my conventional construction, is it's modular uh, in design, meaning we can change lengths, we can change widths, but for grow dome itself, by simply adding in bands, if we wanted to expand our project, we could actually just add in center sections, if you imagine it as a loaf of bread, and grow the structure in length very easily. It's transportable because, as I'll show you on the next slide of a video, Everything fits into that container, goes on a 40 foot truck, gets dumped off, and you're off to the races. It's lasted through these very exciting winters you have up here. So I proved that to myself. We can heat and cool. Right now we have just heating. We just installed, and as I've learned a lot from this experiment we've been running, um, filters to filter all the air going in. The basic premise of my structures is air holds them up. So you simply inflate the system, it's a columnless system with positive pressure, meaning it's difficult for bugs to get in. Uh, it keeps smells in, pests, uh, pests out, um, and we can control the pollen going in with a filtering system. And at scale, the construction can become very low cost. So this was some of my earlier visions and designs. Um, again, I, I was looking to feed villages, not uh, necessarily look at hemp or cannabis in the beginning. Um, and while we have studied hemp and cannabis, well, hemp here, um, you know, I think this can be a great product for a farmer to buy and have an ex season extension to grow high value crops locally uh, through our, you know, tough winters. Uh, I know Larry really sees this as 
uh, a season extension opportunity to get two crops uh, per season. Um, but I still do believe and one of the next things we'll do when I do my next study, I will be bringing Grow Dome back to our factory. We will be doing an economic study on um, high value crops being grown in so I can give a business case. All right, so the vision in the pictures turned out to be this. I thought it would be a little self-explanatory. Hopefully this works. All right, so this is Grodome showing up on the truck. I think this is at the Loomis Fields, what you call it? Yep. Um, so we dropped it off that day. Everything was done in a little bit of stages. Um, but all we did is we basically used a jackhammer and one man. We installed earth anchors. We tested all the earth anchors. We then come back a couple months later, it could have been the same day. We take the structure. This is the 3,600 square foot structure. Um, small crew unrolls it. I think this was a two day process for us. The goal is to get this down to a one day process. And as you can imagine, this was a learning curve, first time doing this. Um, we spread it out over the ground. I did beat the high tunnels up next to me. So I thought that was positive. You clamp these sections together. The sections are what I'm saying, it's uh, modular. We can make this much longer by simply adding in more center sections. Once we had all of these sections spread out, it gets attached to the building. You can see it simply goes together with a little heat gun and some joints. All simple stuff, all pre-manufactured in our factory in upstate New York, um, where we build all of our air supported structures. That's me getting a good day of labor in. In a, I've filmed these videos myself, so be patient with them. I didn't know what type of time limit would be under. Over the top of the fabric goes the cable. The cable is what gives you all your structural capacity. So, so this is actually one of our company's general biggest patents. When you take a lightweight fabric, which is just a 14 ounce fabric, um, when you inflate that into the cable itself, the steel cable, the cable actually takes all the fabric stress, takes it to the cable and down to the earth anchors at the bottom. And what that does, is it allows a very lightweight 14 ounce fabric to withstand a 50 pound ground snow load uh, and about a 110 mile an hour wind load, I believe, just off the top of the cuff. This is the finished product. It inflates in about 45 minutes. Um, we were really pleased. Again, this was a first, first shot at it. Uh, as you can see, there's a garage door at the end. The HVAC sits within. For now, uh, on our first design, we had a generator sitting outside, but that could easily be sitting on top of the container. And at the end of the day, we were inside with a uh, raw field, which then Larry had to get to work planting. So let me shift this off if I could. So, okay, I can click it now too. It's working, okay. So those are the different views. I took some shots. Um, as you can see at the bottom is where all the earth anchors go in. Um, that's the cabling system on top. I was just talking about um, transferring the load. And what was this field just a couple months later, um, Larry had a ton of hemp in there. We have learned a lot and we know what we need to do. If you can see on the back end, um, we added in some fabric vents to increase airflow um, to the outside to keep the space a little cooler. Um, this is a working, living, breathing project. You can see the uh, inner skin hanging away from the outer skin, which actually gives you your R value. Um, close up of the plant. So we have a little work to do here, no doubt, uh, Larry, but we're trying to get to a point where we can have a very finished end product. I just wanted to run through quickly. I know it's kind of not your guys forte potentially, but really where I see this going is in the first few steps of the food cycle, I would, I would love to see my product minimizing pesticides because you're growing indoors, minimizing cross-pollination. Ideally, because we're indoors, we can get a more um, uniform crop, minimize the labor associated by using some machinery, get obviously consistent production. As we know, environmental conditions kill you. Uh, one of my thoughts was to have a second container on the opposite side. So while you have food production occurring in the space, um, food processing could be done outside of the space, uh, right in the adjacent container. So it could be a system where the equipment's brought in, the planting is done, and then the food is processed and packaged 
and ready for distribution. Um, I would like to obviously bring this more localized. I myself deal with a lot of shipping in our main business. I can tell you there's a lot of cost uh, associated with that and headache nowadays. So I really think we can do a good job of getting these in localized areas, whether it's hemp or just food itself. Um, and then from the sales end of it, uh, you know, you'll get a longer shelf life because you're not having a long transport. We can grow during the growing season, fresh produce. And I usually find customers are really willing to pay when they can see what they're eating basically. As I said, I'm gonna do a little study for myself. I would actually like to connect with uh, the last speaker a little bit on the hemp end of things so we can look at some of the numbers. But just like when we built the first tennis structure, we owned and operated them ourselves because once you have a business model, then you can easily go to obviously the farmers and companies and say, hey, spend X, you'll get this type of return. So I wanna have that all proven out as well. So in short, thank you. And if you have any questions, I'm around. If there's one question, we'll take uh, one question for Donato. Uh, I, I should, but uh, let me, uh, I don't have the contact slide. I should have done that. I'll give you my card though. Go ahead. So the, you the question have... was about the light transmission through the dome. Yeah. So I think each layer has 67% um, and there's two layers. You have the um, calcs on what came exactly through, which we can, I don't know. If you can. Yeah, so we had a weather station inside the grow dome and in the adjacent high tunnel. And I believe the, I don't have the exact numbers in my head, but generally I think the par within the grow dome was about half of what we were getting in the adjacent high tunnel. And just to add to that, I'm working with a company who came up here and visited the site for a fully recyclable envelope with about twice the translucency. So we're hoping to improve on that as well. So at scale, you know, I think I'm gonna bring those costs into the $300,000 range for a model that's 400 feet long. Um, so, but right now, if I'm going to sell it, again, it's, it's very difficult because I have to cover my factory's overhead. So right now, if you're to buy this today, I could easily sell this at $400,000. Um, but my goal is at scale. You know, the shipping container costs are expensive because it's customized. The units are expensive. I think I can take about 25% of that out once we get to scale. Uh, as, as long as you can put in earth anchors, which we did by hand, but if you had a machine to do. So actually, to be honest with you, I normally don't key weld them on. Most of our structures in our conventional business come up and down yearly. Um, we just did that to prevent any, you know, rain from coming through and really seal it up tight. Those clamps, so that flap usually just sits over naturally. Those clamps just drill on and drill off. Okay. Uh, last question. Absolutely. So I want to get it to a point where I feel very comfortable in selling something, right? Because everything we do, our company or my family's name's on the line. So if we have a product, which I feel we're getting pretty close to where we can sell it and you can comfortably grow in it, the skin itself can change. Um, the mechanical equipment itself now, I'll put filters in. Um, so yeah, any improvements on the skin are very low cost because it's the smallest part of the structure. So we can definitely pass all that stuff on. Okay, thanks again, Thank Donato. This has been a production of Cornell University on the web at cornell.edu.